Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Billion Hopes. This is your mentor, Sandy, bringing you AI for real impact. Companies, enterprises, and CXOs literally invest millions of dollars into getting AI embedded in their firms. And more than 70% projects actually fail. So what is going wrong? Let's investigate. I welcome you to this beautiful session, which will open your eyes to the five critical mistakes CXOs are repeatedly making in enterprises and firms. AI for CXOs and enterprises is my playlist, which will be available on my YouTube channel, Billion Hopes. So keep visiting and keep learning. And today's session is precisely what CXOs get wrong about AI. So if CXOs are sitting at the top of the corporate pyramid, be it in HR or production and manufacturing, or operations, or procurement, or IT and strategy, or simply in the boardroom, how can they get AI wrong? Well, there are reasons why they actually are getting it wrong. And here are the five reasons. Let me dive deep into each one of them. And I'm absolutely certain there would be a smile on your face because you will realize that maybe you have been making the same mistakes and there is a structured way you can adopt to avoid making these mistakes and actually make those millions of dollars you are investing into getting AI into your company processes work. Otherwise, only failure is the destiny of AI projects. The very first reason why CXOs get AI wrong, they treat AI as an IT project. For the past three to four decades, companies have benefited tremendously from integrating IT into their operations. Now, as someone who actually saw email arrive for the first time around 1988-89, I know exactly how the whole curve of adoption went. And when in the early 2000s we saw large IT companies helping every kind of other company, small, medium, large enterprises, locally, domestically, regionally, globally, integrate IT, which became ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Softwares. A whole ecosystem evolved. And then came AI early 2020s in full blast. Most companies have not recognized the difference till date. We are in 2026 and the next five years are going to be absolutely defining, separating the winners from the losers. Losers will be those that treat AI as IT. So is AI not ID? Not IT? Not at all. So what is the difference? In any information technology product or product or service, determinism and finality and certainty is the key. This is why some leading IT companies actually say experience certainty because IT is certainty. There are inputs, there are rules, and there are fixed outputs based on the inputs. You can literally predict what output will arrive. With AI, the whole thing is turned on its head you give the AI system inputs, you give it the outputs, and AI system figure out the rules by which it has to run. So this is a clear break from the past. And if you think that the methods, the processes, the thinking behind launching successful IT in your company, which worked so well in the past two decades, will work for AI, you are actually writing a script for utter, complete, disastrous failure. So IT is not AI. If you wish to become an AI first company, which ideally you should because sincerely I feel as an AI researcher and practitioner for many years now, who has actually gone deep into the technical side also, any company that decides to just marginally think of with AI is not going to make it. You need to embed it deep into your processes. And that needs an AI-first mindset, which is not an IT-first mindset at all. Yes, your IT people, the chief technology officer, can be turned into a chief AI officer, provided the person is willing to make that shift, or you need a fresh chief AI officer. So that's the first critical mistake companies currently are making. What is the second critical mistake? This actually is the core of the problem. Most of the boards and the CEOs and CXOs simply overlook 
the importance of data in any AI project. When I started learning AI technically for the first time, over the first six to seven months, I would often laugh at the kind of hype that surrounds AI. Because I realized, being a technologist myself, it's just data. If you have a fantastic data set, nicely cleaned, deduplicated, properly curated, properly modulated to the needs of the AI that you want to implant in your company, adapt, adopt, 80% of the job is done. And then I find companies and CXOs giving the green signal for an AI project and treating data as an afterthought. You might as well not do the project at all. Data is not just the raw material. It is literally the, literally the defining DNA and fuel for an AI project. So if I were the CXO of a company tasked with launching an AI project to decide the destiny of my company, the first thing I would do is get all my data people together. And if I don't have dedicated data people, I would first appoint one. Someone who is actually into data, a data engineer or a data scientist or a data manager or a chief data officer. So that's one thing I always advise in my consultancy. Get a chief data officer for your company. A chief AI officer is different. A chief data officer is always different. And that chief data officer can have certain background, those checks which can always be done. What will this chief data officer do? She will ensure that the 80% responsibility of success of the AI project is handled well. That's it. I've said it all. So if you're really serious about your AI project, Please focus on data. In my courses and in my mentoring programs, I help you do exactly that. I'll talk about that at the end and the links are also given in the comment. Check them out and make the most of the investments you're making. The third major problem that CXOs are actually facing leading to failures is you are expecting an immediate ROI. The reason it is never going to work, please understand. And where does this thinking actually stem from? As an individual, you started using Nano Banana Pro, an image generator, and you were struck by the quality that it can generate. As an individual CXO, you started using Chat GPT 5.1 and you were struck by the detailing in the answers. As an individual, you started using Google Notebook LM and you were struck by the eight different use cases it could actually give. But that is as an individual, as a company, as a workforce in the company, the processes of the company have to be mapped to the individual AI tools, which is easier said than done. And this is where everything falls flat. Why is it that CXOs and companies constantly complain that while individuals are feeling very happy using the AI tool, somehow we do not see the final impact in the overall rise of productivity of my company? Because you haven't actually ask the most fundamental question. Am I mapping the AI tools to my company's core processes? It doesn't happen automatically. You need to do the systems analysis first and then move on to adopting certain AI tools. And then again, for every narrow vertical of work, there are three or four leading AI tools and LLMs. So if there are 15 process verticals in your company, organization, there will be three to four top class AI tools for each of them. So that makes it 15 into three. So you are roughly around 50 tools. How do you select one best so that they all gel well? That in itself is a science. And if you just let randomness do it for you, I wish you all the best. Let randomness take over. The fourth major problem CXOs face is focusing on tools and not workflows. Now you know exactly what I mean. This is what I explained right now. So there's this new fancy AI tool in the market and there's this glitzy marketing around it and you are floored. You have seen a few videos on YouTube. You have perhaps attended the conference and the guy actually sold the product well. The backend is strong. The scaling is good. Everything is reliable. You go for it. 
wait, 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 wait. Before you appoint any vendor as your AI supplier, please check whether the tool is actually needed for the workflows you have. So we go back to the basic. Did you even do a complete process flow analysis at a strategic level for your company first? If you do not, then you are like the lost ship, beautiful ship in an ocean where every wind is the right wind. And that is a sure shot recipe for disaster. So dear CXO, dear business person, dear entrepreneur, remember everything I am saying applies to a small company a one-person company, solopreneurs, a medium-scale company, or a giant MNC. In fact, the bigger you are, the more is the risk you're carrying not doing AI right. It's not just the money you lose, it's the competitive edge you lose to someone else who does it right. 2026 to 2030, we'll see AI actually turbocharge certain companies and lead to a disaster in some others. And the difference will lie in the CXO's approach. Individual employees of the companies can do very little about it because this is a strategic matter. And as the Japanese would always say, 80% of the blame in any company has to lie at the board of directors door for they are the ones who guide everyone. The fifth problem, ignore change management. Oh, how could you ever do that? You have been conducting change management workshops. You have been conducting human resource workshops. You have been attending these high-flying conferences across the world. And yet you got it wrong? Now let me sound the warning bell straight away. The moment you make AI first a company priority, 50% of your employees are going to be spooked. That's a fact of life. Let's face it as it is. So you make an announcement that our company will now become an AI first company. We're going to integrate AI into everything. And you do not assure the employees that they won't lose jobs. So what is the next thing to happen? I can guarantee what is the next thing that will happen. And you are experiencing it right now. Your employees, they will be spooked. So they will either actively resist the AI implementation, may even sabotage the AI implementation. And I wouldn't blame them at all in their place. Maybe many people would do the same. Or they will passively resign and not do it. So your project is anyway a failure. A lot of middle managers resist AI because they can clearly see it is being brought to replace me. The CXOs are very gung-ho and the middle managers are spooked and the lower employees feel that the bottom has gone out of the pyramid and we are dead. So if you are going to be an AI first company, please be honest about the goals and at least for the existing workforce, if you want AI to succeed in your company, guarantee that they wouldn't be fired if they are willing to upskill and they are willing to become fitter in the new ecosystem. From a CXO's perspective, you are safe. You are going nowhere. Your job is going nowhere. You have made your money already, right? Think about it from their perspective. They are the ones who are going to make the project successful. Otherwise, why do you even need them? Then just have a big robot do everything for you and you are all alone in the company. That surely is not your goal and no such robot is arriving anytime soon, irrespective of the hype that these people are creating. I hope you have understood the five problems. There is some write-up. You can go through it. Now, how can I help? I have absolutely wonderful programs which can help you, dear CXO. At an individual level, you can go for my CXO AI mentoring programs. For several months, I can give you one-on-one -on -one mentoring in terms of getting your entire vision right. And that's a very slow, tedious, laborious, but a very rewarding process. Complete details of the course available on my academy. The link is given. Spend your time, take your time, go through it, and then fill up the form. My team will get back to you quickly. Now, if you want to do a master class of 12 hours, or so we have the AI force multiplier for it. And if you want to do the force multiplier full day master class of 12 hours that lays out the whole nitty gritty of what AI should be for CXO and couple it up with strategy and vision sessions over four months, you can go for AI force multiplier plus these courses are now available. Find the link, check it out, fill the form or enroll straight away. I wish you all the best. You're putting in millions of dollars into making your AI vision work. 
you better do it right because otherwise the cost is not just in terms of the money's loss but the cost of sheer opportunity and your leadership in the world. I wish you all the best. This was Mentor Sandy bringing you AI for Real Impact. See you soon. Music